Welcome to the definitive CDH compilation of Goto Bandit Warlord. Goto is a one card win condition in the command zone. It can fetch up Helm of the Host and create infinite Godos and infinite combats to win the game. It uses speed to ramp up to the required mana to both cast its commander and equip Helm. Goto's ease of piloting and mono color makes it an amazing deck for new CDH players. Cory has the best old man yelling at clouds impersonation and gets to start us off. But Ryan has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Red Elemental Blast. Cory draws a card for turn and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps a City of Brass to play a turn one, Draneth Magistrate. The rest of the table knows it's going to be one of those games and Cory passes. Kyle draws a card for turn and plays a Command Tower. He casts Deathrite Shaman. He passes. Ryan draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Tibalt's Trickery. He ships the turn. Lincoln draws and starts off his turn by paying two life to help cast Jataxian Probe, targeting Cory. He looks at Cory's hand and draws a card. He casts a Mox Amber. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Dispel. He plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Mystic Remora. He gives the turn to Cory. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He moves to combat and attacks Lincoln with Draneth Magistrate. Lincoln takes it and all finished up, Cory ships his turn. Kyle draws and plays a Kaya's Cradle. He casts a Soul Ring. Mystic Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. He casts a Grim Monolith and Lincoln draws off of Remora again. Kyle gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Dwarven Ruins into play tapped. He takes no other actions and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Lincoln casts Dark Ritual adding three black. He flashes in an Opposition Agent. The turn moves to Lincoln. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays for his Remora. He draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Opposition Agent. Ryan takes it and with nothing else, Lincoln passes. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Short Guy, Genesis Engine. Mystic Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. In response, Lincoln casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Short Guy. Now before you go typing in the comments, remember, Short Guy is not a creature. It's an artifact that turns into a creature only when it's been crewed. Therefore, Force of Negation can target and counter it. Anyway, back to the game. Shorkai is countered and exiled, and Cory returns it to the command zone. All finished up, Cory ends his turn. Kyle draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Rest in Peace. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. Rest in Peace enters and exiles all graveyards. He ships the turn. Ryan draws, stares at Draneth Magistrate, takes no other actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays to keep his Remora. Lincoln draws and then immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Opposition Agent. Ryan takes it, and all finished up, Lincoln ships the turn. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage again. He draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. Mystic Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. He casts Mox Opal. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. He gives the turn to Kyle. Kyle draws and casts Sneak Attack. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. The table braces for impact. Sneak Attack resolves, but Kyle decides to bide his time. He gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws, curses Cory, and Draneth Magistrate, takes no other actions, passing. During his upkeep, Lincoln lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Demir's Signet. He casts a Ledger Shredder. He passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Cory wonders if his Mana Crypt is faulty, and the table laughs. He draws and casts a Mana Vault. He casts Unwinding Clock. Ledger Shredder triggers, and Lincoln connives, drawing, discarding, and putting a 1-1 counter on Shredder. In response, Lincoln casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting Unwinding Clock. In response, Cory casts Swan Song, targeting Force of Will. Swan Song counters Force, Lincoln creates a 2 2 bird, and Unwinding Clock resolves. Cory casts Esper Sentinel. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Skull Clamp. He activates Skull Clamp, equipping it to a pilot, killing it, and drawing two cards. He plays an island for turn. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Finished up, he gives the turn to Kyle. Cory untaps his artifacts with Kyle through Unwinding Clock. Kyle draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. At the end of Kyle's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Cory untaps his artifacts with Ryan through Unwinding Clock. Ryan draws and takes no other actions, passing the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Lincoln draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum. He takes no other actions and passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor. He activates Shorkai. In response, Lincoln taps his Cephalid Coliseum to help flash in a Notion Thief. Notion Thief resolves, and with the Shorkai trigger still on the stack, Cory taps his City of Brass to help flash in Dress Down. Ledger Shredder triggers, and Lincoln connives. In response, Lincoln taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Spell Pierce, targeting Dress Down. 
Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives again. Spell Pierce resolves, Corey pays too, and then Dress Down resolves. Dress Down enters and Corey draws. Then Shorkai's ability resolves and Corey draws two, discards one, and creates a pilot. Still in the instep, with Opposition Agent temporarily shut off, Kyle cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. The turn finally moves to Corey. During his upkeep, Corey finally wins his Mana Crypt roll. The table cheers, remembers he's the enemy, and then stops cheering. During his draw step, Corey takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He activates Skull Clamp twice, killing two pilots and drawing four cards. He casts Counterbalance. He casts Sensei's Divining Top, which is really bad with Counterbalance. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Enlightened Tutor. He clamps a pilot, drawing two cards. All through, Cory ends his turn. At the end of Cory's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. Kyle draws and casts a Graph Digger's Cage. Counterbalance triggers and Cory declines to reveal. Esper triggers and Kyle pays. All finished up, Kyle passes. Ryan draws and takes no other actions. He yells at some clouds and then ships his turn. Lincoln draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Notion Thief and Opposition Agent and then Corey with Ledger Shredder. They both take it and in his second main phase, Lincoln casts Mox Diamond. Esper triggers and since it's not an optional trigger, Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Mox Diamond resolves, Lincoln doesn't discard a land and then Diamond goes to the graveyard. He plays a clear water pathway for turn. He casts Demonic Tutor. Ledger Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives. Tutor resolves, he searches the top four, puts one into his hand and shuffles. He taps his Cephalid Coliseum to cast Ristic Study. Counterbalance triggers and, in response, Corey activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He then declines to flip for Counterbalance, and then Ristic Study resolves. Lincoln passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Corey flashes in Cathar Commando, paying for Ristic. During his upkeep, Corey loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum. He activates top, looking at and rearranging the top three. All finished up, Corey gives the turn to Kyle. Kyle draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He casts Teferi, who slows the sunset, paying for Esper and Ristic. He activates Teferi, untapping his Soul Ring and Command Tower and gaining two life. Kyle gives the turn to Ryan. At the end of Kyle's turn, Cory sacrifices his Cathar Commando to destroy Ristic Study. Still in the instep, Ryan casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Draneth Magistrate. Esper triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response to Bolt, Cory casts Dovin's Veto, countering Lightning Bolt. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and starts off his turn by casting Treasonous Ogre. He pays three life into Treasonous Ogre, adding a red. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Lincoln. Esper Sentinel triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response, Lincoln taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Pongify, targeting Treasonous Ogre. Esper triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response, Ryan activates Treasonous Ogre, paying 12 life, adding 4 red. Then Ogre is destroyed and Ryan creates a 3-3-8. Jessica's Will then resolves and Ryan adds 5 red. He casts Jaxus, the Troublemaker. He casts Hammer of Nizan. It enters and triggers, equipping itself to Jaxus. He ships his turn. Lincoln draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He moves to combat, attacking Cory with Ledger Shredder and his bird. Cory blocks Shredder with Avon Mind Sensor and then takes the rest. In his second main phase, Lincoln casts Entomb. Esper and Counterbalance trigger. In response, Cory activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He reveals a Flusterstorm through Counterbalance, countering Entomb. Then Esper's trigger resolves and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Lincoln then pays four life to help cast Snuff Out, targeting Ryan's ape. Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives. He casts Dark Confidant. Counterbalance triggers and Cory spends his top in response. He reveals Dramatic Reversal off of Counterbalance, countering Dark Confidant. With nothing else, Lincoln ships the turn. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and then he spins his top. He takes no other actions and passes the turn. Kyle draws and pays three to put Gigantha into his hand. He activates Teferi, targeting his Grim Monolith and his Bayou. He untaps both and gains two life. He casts Noble Hierarch. He gives the turn to Ryan. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He takes no other actions, passing the turn. Lincoln draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Ledger Treader and his bird. Ryan takes it and Lincoln passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory spins his top. During his upkeep, Cory once again loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Thassa's Oracle. The table suddenly comes to attention and Cory tells him that it's just for value. No one believes him and then Thoracle resolves. It enters, triggers, and the table braces for impact. Cory simply looks at the top five cards of his library, keeps one on top, and puts the rest on bottom. All finished up, the table breathes a sigh of relief, and Cory ends his turn. Kyle draws and casts Ral's Eric, paying the Esper tax. In response, Lincoln casts Counterspell, targeting Ral's Eric. Esper triggers, and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Then Counterspell counters Ral. Kyle activates Teferi, targeting his Soul Ring and his Volcanic Island. He untaps both and gains two life. He ships the turn to Ryan. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts Kark Clan Ironworks. Esper triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. 
Ryan gives the turn to Lincoln. Lincoln draws and casts an arcane signet. Esper triggers and he draws through Notion Thief. He taps his Cephalid Coliseum to help cast Windfall. Shredder and Counterbalance trigger and in response, Cory spins the top. He then declines to reveal for Counterbalance. Still in response, Cory casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Windfall. Windfall is countered and Lincoln moves to combat. He attacks Cory with Ledger Shredder and Ryan with his bird. Bo take it and Ryan and Cory die. All finished up, Lincoln passes. Kyle draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Gaia Drone Dehada. He activates it to gain control of Opposition Agent. Kyle activates Teferi, targeting his Soul Ring and his Volcanic Island. He untaps both and gains two life. He casts his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. He activates Sneak Attack, putting Gigantha onto the battlefield, giving it haste until the end of turn. He taps Gigantha for mana. He activates Sisse, fetching up a Teferi, Time Raveler, onto the battlefield. Lincoln sighs as he's now locked out of casting spells on Kyle's turn. He activates Teferi, bouncing his own Gigantha and drawing a card. He cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He activates Sneak Attack, putting Gigantha onto the battlefield, giving it haste. He floats mana through Gigantha and then activates Sisse, fetching up Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, onto the battlefield. He activates Kiora, untapping Gigantha, and activates Sisse again. He fetches up Kiora, Master of Depths, onto the battlefield. He activates Kiora, Master of Depths, untapping Gigantha. He activates Sisse, fetching up an Oath of Teferi, onto the battlefield. He reactivates Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, untapping Gigantha. He activates Sisse, fetching up the Chain Veil onto the battlefield. He activates the Chain Veil, giving all of his Planeswalkers another activation this turn. He reactivates Teferi, who slows the Sunset, targeting his Guy's Cradle, Gigantha, and Chain Veil, untapping them and gaining two life. He activates Sisse, fetching up Saheeli Ray onto the battlefield. He activates it, scrying one, and pinging Lincoln for one. He presents a loop of activating the Chain Veil, reactivating Teferi, who slows the Sunset, untapping Guy's Cradle, Gigantha, and the Chain Veil for infinite Chain Veil activations. Each time, he activates Saheeli Ray, pinging Lincoln, until he is dead, and Kyle wins the game. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Orin had the best Emilio Estevez impersonation and gets to start us off. Orin draws a card for turn and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He gets a turn one, Mystic Remora. Orin passes. Cal draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault. Remora triggers and Orin draws. Cal ends his turn. Jin draws and starts off her turn by casting Jeweled Lotus. Remora triggers and Orin draws. She plays a Dwarven Ruins into play tapped. Jen passes the turn. Rich draws and plays a Savannah. He casts a Tender Wall. Rich ships the turn to Orin. During his upkeep, Orin lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Trinket Mage. It enters and he fetches up a Mana Crypt into his hand. He casts Mana Crypt. Orin gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and starts off his turn by paying two life to cast a Taxi and Probe, targeting Rich. He looks at Rich's hand and draws a card. He plays a Peseju, who endures as his land for turn. He casts his Commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. Cal sends it over to Jen. Jen draws and casts Gamble. She fetches up a card into her hand and then randomly discards a Welding Jar. She plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and passes the turn. Rich draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts an Imperial Seal. 
he fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Rich passes. During his upkeep, Orin wins his mana crypt roll. He draws and plays a reflecting pool. He casts his commander, Yennet, Cryptic Sovereign. He moves to combat and attacks Cal with Trinket Mage. Cal takes it and Orin ends his turn. During his draw step, Cal takes the damage from his mana vault. He moves to combat and attacks Rich with Malcolm. Rich takes it and Malcolm triggers. Cal creates a treasure and in his second main phase, Cal casts Rhystic Study. In response, Rich flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor. Then Rhystic resolves and Cal gives the turn to Jen. Jen draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. She casts a Lotus Petal, paying the Rhystic tax. She stares angrily at Avon Mind Sensor and passes to Rich. Rich draws and casts a Goblin Bombardment, paying the Rhystic tax. Rich passes. During his upkeep, Orin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Emergence Zone. He moves to combat and attacks Cal with Trinket Mage and Jen with Yennet. Yennet triggers and Orin reveals a Resculpt, drawing it. Then they both take it and in his second main phase, Orin casts Time Warp. Rhystic triggers and he pays. In response, Cal casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering Time Warp. With nothing else, Orin passes to Cal. During his draw step, Cal takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Jen with Malcolm. Jen takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Cal creates a treasure. All through, Cal ends his turn. Jen draws and plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. Jen passes. Rich draws and casts Avacyn's Pilgrim. Rhystic triggers and Cal draws. He plays a Guy's Cradle for turn. He casts Academy Rector. Rhystic triggers and Cal draws again. In response, Cal casts Delay, countering and exiling Rector with three time counters on it. He moves to combat and attacks Jen with Avon Mind Sensor. Jen takes it and Rich gives the turn to Orin. During his upkeep, Orin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Soothsaying, paying the Rhystic tax. He moves to combat and attacks Jen with Trinket Mage and Cal with Yennet. Yennet triggers and, in response, Orin activates Soothsaying where X equals 5. He looks at and rearranges the top 5 of his library. Then Yennet resolves and then Orin reveals a Neza Hall, Primal Tide, casting it for free. Rhystic triggers and Orin pays. Then they both take it and in his second main phase, Orin plays an Inventor's Fair. Sitting in a good spot, Orin passes the turn. During his draw step, Cal takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Stomping Ground into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Snap, targeting Nezahal. Nezahal triggers and Orin draws. In response, Orin discards 3 cards and activates Nezahal's ability, exiling it until the end of turn. Cal moves to combat and attacks Jen with Malcolm. Jen takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Cal creates a treasure. Finished up, Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Nezahal re-enters the battlefield. Jen draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Rich removes a time counter from Academy Rector. He draws and starts off his turn by casting his commander, Timna the Weaver. Rhystic triggers and Cal draws. He moves to combat and attacks Jen with Avon Mind Sensor. Jen takes it and in his second main phase he pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He plays a Windswept Teeth for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a plateau onto the battlefield. He casts his other commander, Tana the Bloodsower, paying the Rhystic Tax. Finished up, Rich passes. During his upkeep, Orn wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also in his upkeep, he activates Susane for two, rearranging the top two. He draws and plays a Command Tower. He moves to combat and attacks Jin with Nezahal, Cal with Trinket Mage, and Rich with Yennet. Yennet triggers and Orin reveals a blatant thievery, casting it, targeting Cal's Malcolm, Jin's Jewel Lotus, and Rich's Timna. Rhystic triggers and Orin pays. In response, Cal casts Muddle the Mixture, targeting thievery. In response, Orin casts Dovin's Veto, countering Muddle. With blatant thievery still on the stack, Jin sacrifices her Jeweled Lotus. Also in response, Rich activates Goblin Bombardment, sacrificing Timna, dealing one to Orin. Then Blatant Thievery resolves and Orin gains control of Cal's Malcolm. Then they all take the hit, and with nothing else, Orin passes the turn. During his draw step, Cal takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Vernon Catacombs for turn. He cracks it and pays a life. In response, Orin flashes in an Archivist of Ogma. Rhystic triggers and Orin pays. Ogma resolves and then Cal searches the top four through Avon Mind Sensor. He fails to find and shuffles. Archivist triggers and Orin gains a life and draws a card. Cal casts Wandering Archaic. Cal ships the turn to Jen. Jen draws, and still being locked out by Mind Sensor, passes the turn. During his upkeep, Rich removes a time counter from Academy Rector. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Jen with Tana. Jen takes it, Tana triggers, and Rich creates two Saperlings. In his second main phase, he casts Wishclaw Talisman. Rhystic and Nezahal triggers, and Rich and Cal draw. Rich activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Jen. Ogma triggers, and Orin gains a life and draws a card. Rich casts Protean Hulk. Rhystic triggers and, in response, Orin casts Pact of Negation, Wandering Archaic, and Rhystic Trigger. Cal draws from Rhystic, then Cal chooses not to copy Pact. With nothing else, Pact counters Hulk, Cal draws from Rhystic, and then Rich passes the turn. During his upkeep, Orin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He also activates Soothsaying for two, rearranging the top two. He also pays for his Pact of Negation. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Cal with Yennet, Malcolm, and Nezahal, and attacks Jen with Archivist and Trinket Mage. Yennet triggers, Orin reveals a Soul Guide Lantern, casting it, paying the Rhystic Tax. 
Lantern enters, and he exiles Protean Hulk from Rich's graveyard. Then they all take it, Malcolm triggers, and Orin creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Orin activates Nezahal, discarding Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite, Teferi's Protection, and Void Winor, exiling Nezahal until the end of turn. He casts Reanimate, targeting Void Winor, Wandering Archaic, and Mystic Trigger. Cal draws, and then Orin pays for Archaic. In response, Cal pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, targeting Snap in his graveyard, putting it on top of his library. Then Reanimate resolves, Void Winnower enters, and Orin loses nine life. Sitting in a good spot, Orin passes. At the end of Orin's turn, Nezahal re-enters the battlefield. During his draw step, Cal takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He moves to combat and attacks Jen with Wandering Archaic. Jen takes it, and Cal passes the turn. Jen draws and plays an Inventor's Fair. She activates Wishclaw, searching the top four through Raven Mind Sensor and giving Wishclaw to Cal. Archivist of Ogma triggers, and Orin gains a life and draws a card. With nothing else, Jen passes. At the end of Jen's turn, Rich activates Goblin Bombardment, sacrificing Avacyn's Pilgrim and two Saffirlings, targeting Cal. Cal dies, Wishclaw goes back under Rich's control, and then Cal's Malcolm leaves the battlefield. The turn moves to Rich. During his upkeep, Academy Rector's Suspend Trigger goes onto the stack. In response, Rich activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Orin. Archivist of Ogma triggers, and in response, Rich casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Void Winor. Nezahal triggers, and Orin draws. Swords exiles Void Winor, and Orin gains 11 life. Then Orin draws a card and gains a life from Archivist. Then Rich removes the final time counter from Academy Rector and casts it. Rich draws and then casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He moves to combat and attacks Jin with Tana. Jin takes it, Tana triggers, and Rich creates two Saffirlings. In his second main phase, Rich pays a life and draws a card through Timna. With nothing else, Rich passes. During his upkeep, Orin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Sensei's Divining Top. He activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He plays a Command Beacon for turn. Orin casts... Expropriate. In response, Rich activates Goblin Bombardment, sacrificing Academy Rector, targeting Yennet. Academy Rector triggers and, in response, Orin activates Soul Guide Lantern, exiling each opponent's graveyard. Now, since Academy Rector can't be exiled through its ability, Academy Rector's ability fizzles. With Expropriate still on the stack, Rich activates Goblin Bombardment, sacrificing even Mind Sensor, Timna, and his Saffirlings, killing Yennet. He activates Goblin Bombardment one more time, sacrificing Tana, pinging Orin for one. Then Expropriate resolves, Orin votes time, and the other two vote money. Orin gets an extra turn, and then he gains control of Jen's Dwarven Mind and Rich's Guy's Cradle. Orin moves to combat and attacks Jen with Nezahal and Trinket Mage and attacks Rich with Archivist of Ogma. They both take it, and Jen dies. All through, Orin moves to his extra turn. During his upkeep, Orin finally loses his Mana Crypt roll this game and takes three damage. He draws and activates Sensei's Divining Top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He plays an Ottawara, Soaring City, as his land for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Rich with Archivist, Trinket Mage, and Nezahal. Rich takes it, and in his second main phase, Orin recasts his commander, Yannick, Cryptic Sovereign. Orin gives the turn to Rich. Rich draws and casts Dothy Voidwalker. In response, Orin casts Mana Drain, countering Dothy. Rich passes back to Orin. During his upkeep, Orin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and in his first main phase, he adds two colorless through Mana Drain. He casts Liliana Bess. He activates Liliana's second ability, fetching up a card onto the top of his library. He shows what the card is, which is a Nexus of Fate. Orin states he will cast Nexus through Yennet, get an extra turn, then do the same thing again through Liliana during his extra turn. He has enough damage through combat to kill Rich. So, Rich sees he is dead to attacks, concedes to Orin, and Orin wins the game. Nick won the egg holding contest and gets to start us off. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Savannah. He casts a Dryad Militant, much to the dismay of Peter and Noah. Nick passes. Peter draws and plays a Nick, though, Shrine to Nick's. He casts a Mana Vault and passes. Ryan draws and plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. Ryan ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He casts a Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts his Commander, Quark the Thumbless. Noah shifts the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Hushbringer. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Dryad Militant. Peter takes it, and Nick gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and plays a City of Traitors. He pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays 6 life through Kirik to help cast Beseech the Queen. Kirik triggers and gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. He fetches up an Entomb into his hand. He pays 2 life to help cast Entomb. Kirik triggers and gets another counter. He fetches up a Villas, Broker of Blood, into his graveyard. Peter pays 2 life to cast Reanimate, targeting Villas. Villas enters the battlefield, and Peter loses 8 life. Since Villas sees this life loss, Villas triggers, and Peter draws 8 cards. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Ancient Tomb. He pays 4 life to help cast Shieldra, the Apocalypse. Villas triggers, and Peter draws 4. He pays 2 life to cast Dark Ritual. Villas triggers, and Peter draws 2 cards. Shieldra triggers, and Peter gains 4 life. Then Peter adds 3 black. Peter pays 2 life through Kirk and 2 life to activate Villas, targeting Hushbringer. Villas triggers, and Peter draws 4. Shieldra triggers, and Peter gains 8 life. 
Then Hushbringer gets minus one, minus one. Peter does this again, paying four life, drawing four cards, then gaining eight life through Shieldred. Hushbringer then gets another minus one, minus one, killing it. Peter casts a Soul Ring. He activates Phyllis, paying four life, targeting Kark. Phyllis triggers, Peter draws four, Shieldred triggers, and Peter gains eight. With the trigger still in the stack, he repeats this process over and over, drawing a total of 40 cards and gaining a total of 80 life. Then all the triggers resolve and Kark dies. Peter casts Lotus Petal. He pays two life to cast Reign of Filth, drawing two through Villas and gaining four life through Shieldred. He pays four life to help cast Professor Onyx, drawing four and gaining eight. He casts Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Professor Onyx triggers and drains everyone for one. Chain of Smog resolves, Peter discards two and then continues the chain, targeting himself. He does this over and over, draining the table through Professor Onyx every time Chain of Smog is copied, and Peter wins the game. But Ryan and Noah have pregame actions. Ryan puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Pyroblast. Noah also puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a mountain. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Emergence Zone. He pays 6 life and cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays 4 life through Kirik to cast Dothy Voidwalker. Kirik triggers and gets a counter. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts a Mox Opal. Ryan passes. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He passes. Nick draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Birds of Paradise. Nick shifts the turn. Peter draws and plays a Beseju, who shelters all, into play tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Dothy and Kirik. Ryan takes it and Peter gains 3 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts a Mana Vault. He casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding Fork and drawing two cards. Fork and Thrill of Possibility are exiled under Dothy Voidwalker, and Ryan passes the turn. Noah draws and plays an island. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Kark. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Kark. Peter takes it, and Noah passes to Nick. Nick draws and casts an Esper Sentinel. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing Mana Confluence as an additional cost. He fetches up a Gaia's Cradle onto the battlefield. He casts a Bloom Tender. Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Peter casts Cut Down, targeting Kark. Kark dies, and the turn moves to Peter. Peter draws and taps his Beseju to cast Soul Ring. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kirik. Ryan takes it, and Peter gains 4 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws, plays a Buried Ruin, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Noah cycles Step Through, fetching up a Spellseeker into his hand. Noah draws and casts Spellseeker. It enters, and he fetches up a Snap into his hand. He attacks Peter with Sakashima. Peter takes it, and Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Utopia Sprawl, naming Red as it enters. He casts his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Esper Sentinel and Bloom Tender. Peter takes it, and Nick ships the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Balthor the Defiled. Kirk triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts his commander, Godo, Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He activates Helm, targeting Godo. In response, Nick flashes in a Cathar Commando. He then sacks Cathar Commando, destroying Helm of the Host. Then Helm of the Host goes into exile through Dothy Voidwalker with a Void Counter on it. Ryan, with very little way out of this mess, passes to Noah. Noah draws and casts Snap, targeting Jetmir. Kark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Snap, targeting Spellseeker. In response, Peter activates Dothy Voidwalker, sacrificing it, casting Ryan's Fork for free, targeting Snap. Fork resolves, creating a copy of Snap, targeting Noah's Kark. Peter taps his Beseju, floating mana, then Snap resolves, Kark bounces, and Peter untaps two lands. Then Noah taps his Shivan Reef, floating mana, Spellseeker bounces, and Noah untaps two lands. Then Noah floats mana, then the original Snap resolves, bounces Jetmere, and then Noah untaps two lands again. He casts Stormkill Nardus. He taps his Shivan Reef to cast Gamble. Stormkill triggers, and Noah creates a treasure. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Spellseeker. He casts Brainstorm and creates a treasure through Stormkill. He draws three and then puts two back on top. He casts Ponder and creates a treasure again. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, shuffles, and draws. He plays a Fiery Islet for turn. Finished up, Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Champion of Lamholt. He casts a Vren Wingmare. Champion of Lamholt triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Nick passes. Peter draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal, paying the Esper Tax. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Godo. Godo triggers, Ryan untaps it, and gains an extra combat. Peter blocks Godo with Kirik, Godo dies, and Peter gains five life. Finished up, Ryan ends his turn. Noah draws and taps his Fiery Islet to help recast his commander, Kark the Thumbless. Noah passes. Nick draws and also recasts his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. Champion triggers and gets a counter. He casts Faber Elder and Champion gets a counter again. He casts a Mana Crypt. 
He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Vren Wingmare and Noah with Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Champion of Lamhole. Champion prevents anyone from blocking, so they both take the hit. All through, Nick gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Shieldred the Apocalypse. He passes. At the end of Peter's turn, Ryan pays to untap his Grim Monolith. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. Shieldred triggers and Ryan loses two life. In his main phase, he plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. He recasts his commander, Godo, Bandit Warlord. It enters and he fetches up a Hammer of Nizan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers and Ryan attaches it to Godo. Ryan passes. During his draw step, Noah loses two life to Shieldred. In his main phase, Noah casts Underworld Breach. As for triggers and Nick draws. Shieldred triggers and Nick loses two life. Noah escapes Gamble. Kark and Storm Kiln trigger. Noah creates a treasure and with the Kark trigger still on the stack, Peter pays six life through Kirk to activate Balthor, exiling it and returning all black and red creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield, which is his Dothy Voidwalker. Then Noah wins his flip, copies Gamble, and creates a treasure through Stormkiln. Then Noah fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Tybalt's Trickery into exile through Dothy. Then the original resolves and he fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards Swansong into exile. Noah pays two life to cast a Taxian Probe targeting Peter. He creates a treasure through Stormkiln, then loses his Quark Flip, returning Jataxian Probe to his hand. He pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe again. He creates a treasure, then loses his Flip again, returning it to his hand. He pays two life to cast it again. He creates a treasure, then loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. He pays two life again to cast it again. He creates a treasure and, you guessed it, loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. Not one to back down from a challenge, he pays two life to cast it yet again. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure, then Noah finally wins his flip, copying it, targeting Ryan. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure. He looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. Shielder triggers and Noah loses two life. He then looks at Peter's hand and draws a card, which attacks the probe getting exiled under Dothy. Shielder triggers and Noah loses two life again. Noah plays a mountain and, unfortunately stopped in his attempt, passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. During his upkeep, Nick wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he loses two life through Shieldred. He plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Basri Cat. He activates Basri's second ability. Nick moves to combat and attacks Noah with Champion of Lamholt, Jetmere, and Vryn Wingmare, and attacks Ryan with Birds of Paradise, Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Faber Elder. Basri triggers, creating seven 1-1 one -one soldiers, all attacking Peter. Champion of Lamholt triggers seven times, getting seven plus one plus one counter. Now no one can block due to the Champion of Lamholt, and since Jetmere gives all of Nick's creatures plus three plus oh, Vigilance, Trample, and Double Strike, they all take it, die to combat damage, and Nick wins the game. Everett wins the tightrope walk and gets to start us off. But Corey has a pregame action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Cyclonic Rift. Everett draws for turn and plays an Arid Mesa. He passes. Alex draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mana Vault. He ships the turn to Tyler. Tyler draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Eidolon of the Great Ravel. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Grim Monolith. He casts a Manifold Key. He activates the key and untaps Grim Monolith. Tyler passes. At the end of Tyler's turn, Cory casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He flashes in an Opposition Agent. In response, Everett cracks his Aired Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Opposition Agent resolves and the turn moves to Cory. Cory draws and casts a Soul Ring. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He moves to combat and attacks Tyler with Opposition Agent. Tyler takes it and Cory ends his turn. Everett draws and casts a Skirk Prospector. He gives the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Spire Garden. He casts his commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. He moves to combat and attacks Tyler with Paco. Paco triggers and Alex exiles a Talisman of Curiosity. Tyler exiles a Cryptic Trollobite. Cory exiles a Felwar Stone and Everett exiles an Angel's Grace. Paco then gets three plus one plus one counters and Tyler takes six. Alex gives the turn to Tyler. Tyler draws, takes no actions, and passes. Cory draws and casts a Ghostly Pilferer. He moves to combat, attacking Tyler with Esper Sentinel and Everett with Opposition Agent. Both players take it and Cory ships the turn. Everett draws and then sacrifices Skirk Prospector, adding a red. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and he creates seven treasures. He casts Ad Nauseam. Esper Sentinel triggers and Cory draws. With no answers, Adnaz resolves. Everett reveals a Chrome Mox, Praetor's Grasp, Talisman of Indulgence, Dualcaster Mage, Mox Opal, Manifold Key, City of Brass, Koldotha Rebirth, Mana Confluence, Luxury Suite, Lion's Eye Diamond, Imperial Seal, Bloodstained Mire, Goblin Engineer, Calling the Weak, Sensei's Divining Top, Polluted Delta, Soul Ring, Ride of Flame, March of Otherworldly Light, Wishclaw Talisman, Mana Vault, 
Wheel of Fortune, Portable Hole, and a Sacrifice, deciding to stop there. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Goblin Engineer. He casts Ride of Flame, adding two red. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts March of Otherworldly Light, exiling a white card, targeting opposition agent. In response, Alex casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting March. Esper triggers and Corey draws. In response, Everett casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Doxat as an additional cost, adding four black. Then Deflecting Swat resolves, changing the target to Esper Sentinel. March resolves, exiling Sentinel. Next, Everett casts Praetor's Grass, targeting Alex. He fetches up a card from Alex's library into exile face down. He casts Underworld Breach through Praetor's Grasp. Ghostly Pilferer triggers and Cory draws. Underworld Breach resolves and Everett escapes Dockside Extortionist. Pilferer triggers and Cory draws. Dockside enters and Everett creates six treasures. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He casts Mox Opal. Channeler triggers and Everett surveils Diabolic Intent into his graveyard. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Channeler triggers again and he surveils Orm's Chant into his graveyard. He casts Manifold Key, surveilling Necromancy into his graveyard. He activates Key, untapping his Mana Vault. He escapes Sacrifice, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Pilferer triggers and Cory draws. Channeler triggers and Everett surveils Underworld Breach into his graveyard. Then Everett adds two black. Everett escapes Dockside Extortionist. Pilferer triggers and Cory draws. Dockside enters and Everett creates six more treasures. He casts Sensei's Divining Top, surveilling Marsh Flats through Channeler. He activates top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He escapes March of Otherworldly Light, targeting Opposition Agent. Channeler and Pilferer trigger. Cory draws through Pilferer and in response to Channeler, Tyler hard casts Ricochet Trap, targeting March. In response, Everett flashes in a Dualcaster Mage. Dualcaster enters and copies Ricochet Trap. Ricochet Trap resolves, redirecting the original Ricochet Trap to the copy. Then the original Trap fizzles, Everett surveils Plateau, then Op Agent is exiled through March. Everett casts Wishclaw Talisman, surveilling Mausoleum Secrets. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three red. He escapes Culling the Weak, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Channeler and Pilferer trigger, Cory draws, and then Everett surveils Gemstone Caverns into his graveyard. Then Culling resolves, and Everett adds four black. Everett escapes Dockside, Cory draws, and then he creates six treasures. He activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Tyler. He casts Grand Abolisher. In response, Cory casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. Grand Abolisher resolves, and Everett escapes Culling the Weak, sacrificing Dualcaster Mage as an additional cost. Cory draws, Everett surveils Dothy Voidwalker, then adds four black. He escapes Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Cory draws, and Everett surveils Savine's Reclamation. Diabolic Intent resolves, and Everett fetches up a card into his hand. He escapes Praetor's Grasp, targeting Alex. Pilferer triggers, and in response, Everett holds priority and casts Saw in Half, targeting Dragon's Rage Channeler. Still holding priority, he escapes Dualcaster Mage. Pilferer triggers, and Cory draws. Dualcaster resolves and targets Saw in Half. Saw in Half gets copied, targeting Dualcaster. Then Saw in Half resolves, creating two copies of Dualcaster Mage. Both enter and trigger. One targets Saw in Half and the other targets Praetor's Grasp. Everett presents a loop of creating multiple Dualcaster Mages through Saw in Half, then using the copies of Praetor's Grasp to exile cards from his opponent's libraries. He does this over and over until each opponent's library is completely exiled. He passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. One by one, each opponent attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Everett wins the game. Alex draws and plays a Windswept Heath. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield tapped. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He passes the turn. Tyler draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He ships the turn to Cory. Cory draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Mystic Remora. In response, Alex pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Mystic Remora. Cory ends his turn. Everett draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Mox Opal. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Esper Sentinel. He gives the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Training Center. He ships the turn. Tyler draws and plays a Mountain. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Tyler fetches up a Treasonous Ogre into his hand. He passes. Cory draws and plays a Vault of Champions. He casts Gilded Drake. Drake enters and exchanges control of Esper Sentinel. Cory ends the turn. Everett draws and casts a Mana Vault. Esper Sentinel triggers and Cory draws. He casts Talisman of Hierarchy. He taps his Talisman to help cast Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters and he fetches up a Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, into his hand. He moves to combat, attacking Tyler with his Gilded Drake. Tyler takes it and Everett passes the turn. Alex draws and plays a Taiga. He casts his Commander, Halden, Avid Arcanist. He gives the turn to Tyler. Tyler draws and plays a Mountain. He taps his Ancient Doom to help cast Treasonous Ogre. He activates Treasonous Ogre six times, paying 18 life, adding six red. He casts his Commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. Goto enters, and Tyler fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He activates Treasonous Ogre two times, paying six life, adding two red. He casts Desperate Ritual. Esper triggers, and Cory draws. In response, Cory casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Desperate Ritual. Tyler casts Box Opal, and unfortunately, has to pass the turn. 
Cory draws and casts Mox Diamond, discarding a polluted Delta. He casts a Lightning Greaves. He gives the turn to Everett. During his draw step, Everett takes the damage from his Mana Ball. In his main phase, he casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Gilded Drake as an additional cost. Esper triggers and Cory draws. Culling resolves and Everett adds 4 black. He casts Necropotence. He activates Necropotence 10 times, paying 10 life, exiling 10 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. He passes, discarding the hand size, exiling the discarded card. Alex draws and plays a Waterlogged Grove. He casts Jessica's Will with both modes targeting Everett. Esper triggers and Cory draws. In response, Everett taps his Talisman to help cast Silence. Esper triggers and Cory draws again. <laughs> Unfortunately, Silence resolves, locking out opponents this turn. Then Jessica's Will resolves, Alex adds 6 red, and then exiles Mind Break Trap, Chrome Mox, and Dispel. Unable to cast any spells, Alex ships the turn. Tyler draws and wonder how he got this far. He plays a Command Beacon for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to equip Helm of the Host to Goto. He moves to combat, copying Goto, getting infinite combat steps, attacks each opponent until they are dead, and Tyler wins the game. Peter opens the one ring to rule them all and gets to start us off. Peter draws for turn and plays an Urbor, Tomb of Yogmoth. He passes. Sean draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Spellseeker. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He taps his Windswept Teeth for a black through Urbor. He casts a Mana Consultation. In response, Peter casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Demonic Consultation resolves and Mike names Mana Crypt. He exiles cards from his library until he reveals a Mana Crypt, putting them into his hand. He casts Mana Crypt. He casts Talisman of Dominance. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Chromox and printing Red Elemental Blast. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast a Mana Vault. He casts Jaxus the Troublemaker. He gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Jeweled Lotus. He plays a City of Traitors for turn. He sacrifices Jeweled Lotus and pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays 2 life through Kirik to help cast Buried Alive. Kirik triggers and gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. He fetches up a Hoarding Broodlord, Villas Broker of Blood, and a Razaketh the Foul Bloated into his graveyard. He pays 2 life to cast Reanimate, targeting Villas. Kirik triggers and gets a 1 1 counter. Villas enters and Peter loses 8 life. Villas triggers and Peter draws 8 cards. He activates Villas twice, paying 8 life through Kirik, targeting Jaxus. Villas triggers and Peter draws 8. Then Jaxus gets minus 2, minus 2. He casts Mox Amber. He pays 2 life to cast Cabal Ritual. Kirik gets a counter. Peter draws 2 through Villas, then adds 3 black. He pays 2 life to help cast Demonic Tutor. Kirik gets a counter. Peter draws 2, then he fetches up a card into his hand. He pays 2 life to cast Sacrifice, sacrificing Villas as an additional cost. Kirik gets a counter. Peter draws 2 through Villas, and then he adds 8 black. He casts Exhum. Kirk gets a counter and then Peter returns Villas to the battlefield. He pays 2 life to cast Wishclaw Talisman. Kirk gets a counter and Peter draws 2 through Villas. He activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ryan. He pays 2 life to cast Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Kirk gets a counter, Peter draws 2 through Villas and Grey Merchant resolves. It enters and each opponent loses 8 life and Peter gains 24. He casts Grim Monolith. He pays 4 life to cast Dark Petition. Kirik gets a counter, Peter draws 4 cards through Villas and then Dark Petition resolves. He fetches up a card into his hand and adds 3 black. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Great Merchant of Asphodel as an additional cost. Kirk gets a counter, and then Peter adds 4 black. He pays 4 life to help cast Professor Onyx. Kirk gets a counter, Peter draws 4 through Villas, and then Onyx resolves. He pays 2 life to cast Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Kirk, Villas, and Professor Onyx triggers. Each opponent loses 2, and Peter gains 2. He draws 2 through Villas, then Kirk gets a counter. Peter presents a loop of copying Chain of Smog, targeting himself, discarding 2 cards, and Professor Onyx triggering each time. He does this over and over, draining his opponents until they are dead, and Peter wins the game. Sean draws for turn and was punished for his super risky keep. He takes no game actions and passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He taps it to help cast Esper Sentinel. He casts Lotus Petal. He casts Birds of Paradise. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts Mox Opal. Esper Sentinel triggers and Ryan pays. He ships the turn. Peter draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He gives the turn to Sean. Sean draws, again takes no game actions, and passes, discarding to hand size. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Peter with Esper Sentinel. Peter takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Nigel of the Blade Blossom. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts a Felwar Stone. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Mike draws. He ends his turn. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Dark Ritual, and Mike draws through Esper. Then Peter adds three black. He taps his Ancient Tube to help cast Buried Alive. He fetches up Razaket the Foul-Blooded, Villas Broker of Blood, and a Hoarding Broodlord into his graveyard. He casts Mana Crypt. He pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He ends his turn. 
Sean draws and finally finds what he needed. He plays a windswept teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a tinder wall. He sacrifices tinder wall, adding two red. He casts a soul ring and Mike draws through Esper. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Bergy, God of Storytelling. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Mystic Remora. He gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters and Mike creates six treasure. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Najila and Ryan with Esper Sentinel. Najila triggers and Mike creates a warrior tapped and attacking Ryan. Both players declare no blocks and in response, Mike activates Najila. He untaps his creatures and they gain lifelink, trample, and haste. Then Mike gets an additional combat. Peter and Ryan take the hit and Mike gains five. He moves to his additional combat and attacks Peter with Najila and Ryan with a warrior and Esper Sentinel. Najila triggers, creating two warriors tapped and attacking Ryan. Peter and Ryan take the hit and Mike gains five again. Mike passes. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts his own Dockside Extortionist. In response, Mike sacrifices three treasures to add a blue, green, and a white. Dockside enters and Ryan creates five treasures. He casts a Metal Worker. He ships the turn. During his upkeep, Peter wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and pays four life to help cast Final Parting. Kirik, Remora, and Esper trigger. Mike and Sean both draw and in response to Kirik, Ryan casts Thunderclap for its alternate cost, sacrificing a mountain, targeting Kirik. Remora and Esper trigger, Ryan pays for Esper, and Sean draws off of Remora. Then Kirik dies and Final Parting resolves. Peter fetches up a card into his hand and Grey Merchant of Asphodel into his graveyard. Severely set back, he gives the turn to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean lets his Remora die. He draws and casts a Mana Crypt, letting Mike draw through Esper. He casts Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter enters and Sean fetches up his own Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He casts Dockside. In response, Ryan sacrifices two treasures, adding two red. Dockside enters and Sean creates seven treasures. He casts an Underworld Breach. He escapes Bergy, God of Storytelling. He casts Goblin Bombardment. Bergy triggers and Sean adds a red. He casts his commander, Dargo, the shipwrecker, reduced through his treasures. Bergy triggers and Sean adds a red again. He sacrifices Dargo through bombardment, dealing one damage to Peter. He recasts Dargo, adding a red through Bergy. Sean presents a loop of sacrificing Dargo through goblin bombardment, dealing a damage to an opponent, then recasting it, reduced through the previous sacrifice, adding a red through Bergy each time. He does this over and over, until the table is dead, and Sean wins the game. Mike draws return and plays a polluted delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts a Rhystic Study. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He sacrifices his Lotus to help cast his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. With a crazy start out of the gate, Mike passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts a Mox Diamond. Rhystic Study triggers and Ryan pays. Diamond resolves and he discards a Gemstone Caverns. He gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Jeweled Lotus, letting Mike draw. He plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb, sacrifices his Jeweled Lotus, and pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. Rhystic triggers, and Mike draws again. Peter pays 4 life to cast Dothy Voidwalker. Kirik and Rhystic trigger, Mike draws, and Kirik gets a counter. He pays 2 life to help cast Wishclaw Talisman. Mike draws, and Kirik gets another counter. With nothing else, Peter ships the turn. Sean draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts no spells and passes. At the end of Sean's turn, he reminds everyone to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment about your favorite part of tonight's game. Mike draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Najila. Najila triggers and Mike creates a warrior tapped in attacking Ryan. Ryan takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike casts a Soul Ring. He ends his turn. Ryan draws, plays a Snow-Covered Mountain, and ships the turn. Peter draws and taps Ancient Tomb to help activate Wishclaw. He fetches up a card into his hand and gives the Monkey's Paw to Ryan. He pays two life to help cast Cabal Ritual. Kirik and Rhystic trigger, Mike draws, and Kirik gets a counter. Then Peter adds three black. He casts Balthor the Defiled, letting Mike draw and putting a 1-1 counter on Kirik. In response, Sean cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. In a bold move, Sean casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Rhystic Study, trying to force Mike to interact. Rhystic triggers, and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Snap, targeting Dothy Voidwalker. Dothy bounces, and Mike untaps two lands. Still in response to Chain, Mike casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Chain of Vapor. Swat resolves, and Mike changes the target of Chain to Kirik. Chain resolves, bouncing Kirik. In another bold move, Peter sacrifices Ancient Tomb to copy the Chain, targeting Rhystic Study again. Rhystic gets bounced, and Mike ends the Chain. Then Balthor finally resolves. Next, Peter casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Knowing that this is a huge problem, Sean responds by casting Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, exiling LED. With his plans foiled, Peter passes the turn. Sean draws and plays Besaidu, who endures. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts Ragaman Nimble Pilferer. He gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. 
He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Najila and his warrior token. Najila triggers, creating two warriors tapped and attacking Ryan. Ryan takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike recasts Rissic Study. He ships the turn. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw back to Peter. He casts Dockside Extortionist, paying for Ristic. Dockside enters and Ryan creates four treasures. He casts Treasonous Ogre, letting Mike draw through Ristic. In response, Mike casts Silence. Silence resolves, then Treasonous Ogre resolves. Unable to cast any spells, Ryan ends his turn. Peter draws, takes no game actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Sean casts Worldly Tutor, letting Mike draw through Ristic. He fetches up his own Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. He draws and casts Dockside. Mike draws through Ristic, Dockside resolves, and Sean creates four treasures. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Ragavan. Mike takes it, Ragavan triggers, Sean creates a treasure, and Mike exiles a final fortune. In his second main phase, Sean casts Dargo, sacrificing Ragavan, Dockside, and a treasure as an additional cost. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. He casts Jessica's Will, choosing both modes, targeting Mike, paying for Ristic. In response, Mike casts Demonic Consultation. It resolves, and Mike names Fierce Guardianship. He exiles the top six, then exiles all but the last ten cards, putting Fierce Guardianship into his hand. He casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering Jessica's will. With nothing else, Sean gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Gemstone Caverns. He casts Grand Abolisher. With no answers, it resolves, locking out opponents. He taps Tarnished Citadel to help cast the Tinder Wall. He casts Talisman of Curiosity. He sacrifices Tinderwall, adding two red. He casts Samut, Vizier of Noctamun. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Najila, Samut, and three of his warriors. Najila triggers, creating five warriors tapped and attacking Peter. Peter blocks one of the new warriors with Balthor and takes the rest. Samut triggers five times and Mike draws five cards. Mike sighs because he still cannot find his Thassa's Oracle. In his second main phase, he casts a Mox Opal. He casts a Mystic Remora. He ships the turn. Ryan draws and casts Curse Mirror. Esper and Remora trigger and Mike draws too. Mike knows that this is a Dockside Extortionist and pleads with the table to counter it. No one does and Curse Mirror resolves. Mirror enters as a Grand Abolisher. With the table now locked out, Ryan activates Treasonous Ogre, paying three life, adding a red. He casts Grim Monolith and Mike declines his Rhystic triggers. Ryan activates Treasonous Ogre, paying nine life, adding three red. He casts his commander, Godo, Bandit Warlord. Godo enters and Ryan fetches up a Hammer of Nazan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers and Ryan equips it to Goto. He pays 12 life to activate Treasonous Ogre, adding 4 red. He casts Helm of the Host. It enters, Hammer triggers, and Ryan equips Helm to Goto. He moves to combat, creating a copy of Goto. He attacks Sean with Goto, getting an additional combat. Sean takes it, and Ryan moves to his extra combat, creating another Goto. He repeats this process to get infinite combat steps, killing the table, and Ryan wins the game. Alex had the best altered commander and gets to start us off. But Ryan has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Snow-Covered Mountain. Alex draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring, he casts a Felwar Stone, and Alex is super grateful to Ryan for his Gemstone Caverns. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Consecrated Sphinx. He casts his commander, Kenan, Bonder Prodigy. After completely dumping out his hand, Alex passes. Chris draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora. Chris passes. Ryan draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts a Mana Vault. Remora triggers and Chris draws. Ryan ends his turn. TK draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Tender Wall and passes to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex activates Kennen. He looks at the top five, putting Elvish Mystic onto the battlefield. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kennen. Ryan takes it and Alex ships the turn. During his upkeep, Chris pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. Chris ends his turn. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and sends the turn to TK. TK draws and plays an Underground Sea. He sacrifices Tender Wall, adding two red. He casts his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. TK ends his turn. Alex draws and casts Glenelinja Archmage. He casts Perplexing Chimera. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kennen. Ryan takes it, and Alex gives the turn to Chris. During his upkeep, Chris pays to keep his Remora. He draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Chris's turn, Ryan activates Urza Saga, creating a construct. Then Chris discards the hand size, and the turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. In response, Ryan activates Urza Saga, creating another construct. Then Ryan sacrifices Saga, fetching up a Graph Digger's Cage onto the battlefield. The table sighs, and Ryan casts Mox Opal. Remora triggers, and Chris draws. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Alex with a construct. Alex takes five, and then Ryan passes to TK. TK draws and plays a Bayou. He moves to combat and attacks Chris with Najila. Najila triggers and TK puts a 1-1 warrior onto the battlefield tapped and attacking Chris. Chris takes it all and TK passes to Alex. 
Alex draws and plays a treasure vault. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Glenolindra and Chris with Perplexing Chimera and Kinnon. They both take it and Alex passes. During his upkeep, Chris lets his Remora die. He draws and casts a Draneth Magistrate. Chris ends his turn, discarding to hand size. Ryan draws and casts Honor War and Shaku. He moves to combat and attacks Alex with his Construct. Alex takes six and Ryan passes. TK draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He moves to combat and attacks Alex with Najila and a Warrior. Najila triggers, creating two more warriors tapped and attacking Alex. Alex takes it all, and TK passes. Alex draws and plays an island. He holds up blockers against the Onslaught and then sends the turn to Chris. Chris draws, plays a command tower, and passes. Ryan draws and moves to combat. He attacks TK with a construct. TK takes six, and in his second main phase, he gets Goblin Engineer. Perplexing Chimera triggers, and Alex exchanges control of it and Goblin Engineer. With Engineer still in the stack, Chris casts Stern Scolding, targeting Engineer. In response, Alex activates Glenelindra, sacrificing it, countering Stern's Golding. Glenelindra's persist triggers, but doesn't re-enter due to Graftigger's cage. Then Goblin Engineer enters under Alex's control, and he fetches up a Mirage Mirror into his graveyard. Finished up, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, TK casts Intuition. He fetches up a Samut, Vizier of Noctamun, Derevi Imperial Tactician, and a Druid's Repository. Chris gives him Samut, the rest go to his graveyard, and the turn moves to TK. TK draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Samut, Vizier of Noctamun. Perplexing Chimera triggers, and Ryan exchanges control of it. Then Samut resolves. TK moves to combat and attacks Chris with three warriors. Najila triggers, creating three more warriors tapped at attacking Chris. Chris blocks one with Draneth and then takes the rest. TK passes. At the end of TK's turn, Alex activates Treasure Vault, where X equals five, sacrificing it. In response, Chris casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Alex creates five treasures, and the turn moves to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns. He activates Goblet Engineer, sacrificing a treasure, returning Mirage Mirror to the battlefield. Alex ends his turn. During Chris's upkeep, Alex activates Mirage Mirror, having it become a copy of Perplexing Chimera. Chris draws and casts Out of Time. It enters, untaps and phases out all creatures, and Out of Time gets 15 counters. After wiping the board, or more appropriately phasing the board, Chris passes. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts Chrome Mox and printing a braid. He casts his commander, Godo, Bandit Warlord. In response, TK casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Godo. Ryan ends his turn. TK draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Talisman of Dominance. He passes. Alex draws, takes no actions, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Chris removes a counter from out of time. He draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Chris ends his turn. During Ryan's upkeep, Chris casts Silence, locking out opponents from spells this turn. Ryan draws, can't do anything, so he passes. TK draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He ships his turn. Alex draws and casts Transmute Artifact. He sacrifices Felwar Stone, fetching up the One Ring onto the battlefield, paying the difference. He activates the One Ring, adding a Burn Encounter, and drawing a card. He plays a Breeding Pool into play tapped, and then gives the turn to Chris. During his upkeep, Chris removes the counter from out of time. He draws and casts Grand Abolisher. In response, Alex taps Mana Confluence to hard cast My Break Trap. In response, Chris casts Swan Song. Trap is countered, Alex creates a 2-2 bird, and then Grand Abolisher resolves. With nothing else, Chris sends the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws, casts a Grim Monolith, and passes. TK draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts an Esper Sentinel and passes to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex loses a life from the One Ring. He also activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing two cards. He draws and then casts a Lotus Petal. He taps Mana Confluence to cast a Void Winnower. He pays two life to help cast Phyrexian Metamorph. It enters, as a copy, a Void Winnower. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with his bird. Ryan takes it and Alex passes. During his upkeep, Chris removes the counter from out of time. He draws and casts Eternal Scourge. Chris passes. Ryan draws, takes no actions, and passes. TK draws, also takes no actions, and ends his turn. During his upkeep, Alex loses two life from the One Ring. He then activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing three. He moves to combat and attacks Chris with everything. Chris blocks one of the Winnowers with Eternal Scourge and takes the rest. In his second main phase, Alex casts a Trinisphere. All through, Alex passes. During his upkeep, Chris removes a counter from out of time. He draws and passes the turn. Ryan draws, plays a snow-covered mountain, and ships the turn to TK. TK draws and, being locked out by the Void Winnowers, also does nothing and passes to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex loses three life through the One Ring. He also activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing four cards. He draws and plays a Command Tower. He moves to combat and attacks Chris with Void Winner. Since Chris can't block with even creatures, he takes it all and dies. Out of Time leaves the battlefield and all creatures phase back in. In his second main phase, Alex casts Mox Opal. Esper Sentinel triggers and Alex pays. Alex passes the turn. Ryan draws and moves to combat. He attacks Alex with both constructs. Alex blocks with his bird and his Elvish Mystic. Both creatures die, and in his second main phase, Ryan cast Rolling Earthquake, where X equals 12. Alex, knowing he is dead if this resolves, thinks of a plan. 
He activates Mirage Mirror, making it a copy of the One Ring, sacrificing the original. He activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing a card. He casts Whir of Invention, where X equals 4, improvising Trinosphere to help cast it, shutting off Trinosphere. Unfortunately, Perplexing Chimera triggers. TK then exchanges control of Whir and Chimera. Whir resolves, and TK fetches up the One Ring onto the battlefield. With no other answers and nothing else to do, Earthquake resolves. Each creature and each player takes 12. All creatures die, and Alex dies too. With nothing else, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, TK activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing a card. During his upkeep, TK loses a life to the One Ring. He also activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing two cards. He draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Grand Abolisher. He taps his Ancient Doom to help recast his Commander, Nijil of the Blade Blossom. TK ends his turn. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage through his Mana Ball. In his main phase, he recasts his Commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Hammer of Nizan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers, and in response, TK taps his City of Brass to cast Swords of Plowshares targeting Goto. Goto is exiled, and Ryan gains 3 life. Ryan ships the turn. During his upkeep, TK loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He also loses 2 life to the One Ring. He draws and activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing 3 cards. He casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Najila as an additional cost, fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and with a trigger on the stack, TK casts Demonic Consultation, exiling his library. Oracle's trigger resolves, and TK wins the game. Ashani won the Nymar Challenge and gets to start us off. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. Alex draws and plays an island. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts a Mox Amber. He passes. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts an Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws, plays a Snow Covered Mountain, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Ashani cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. The turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mystic Remora. Ashani ends his turn. During his upkeep, Alex loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Waterlog Grove. He taps it to help cast his commander, Kennen Bonder Prodigy. Alex ships the turn. At the end of Alex's turn, Peter pays 4 life to cast Dismember, targeting Kennen. Remora triggers and Ashani draws. In response, Alex casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing an island as an additional cost. Remora triggers and Ashani draws again. Then Alex fetches up a City of Traders onto the battlefield. He casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Dismember. Ashani draws from Remora and Flusterstorm counters Dismember. Still in the end step, Alex activates Kennen. He looks at the top 5, putting an Elvish Mystic onto the battlefield. The turn moves to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Crystal Vein. He casts Heartless Summoning. Remora triggers and Ashani draws. He cracks Crystal Vein and pays 6 life to help cast his commander, Kirk, son of Yogmoth. He pays 4 life to transmute Demir Houseguard. In response, Ashani taps Mana Confluence to help flash in an Opposition Agent. It resolves, then Ashani fetches up the One Ring from Peter's library into exile. Unfortunately blown out, Peter ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting his first counter. He passes. During his upkeep, Ashani pays to keep his Remora. He also wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Scrubland. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Opposition Agent. Ryan takes it, and in his second main phase, Ashani taps his Mana Confluence to cast an Overloaded Dam. All creatures are destroyed, and Peter puts Kirik into the graveyard. Ashani ends his turn. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and taps his Waterlog Grove to help recast his commander, Kennen. He casts Wandering Archaic. Alex passes. During his upkeep, Peter loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Diabolic Tutor. Remora and Wandering Archaea trigger. Alex copies Diabolic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. Then Ashani draws from Remora, then Peter fetches up a card into his hand. Peter ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws, and in his main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a City of Traders for turn. He casts the One Ring. Remora triggers, and Ashani draws. It resolves, and Ryan gains protection from everything. He activates the One Ring, adding a Burn Encounter and drawing a card. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Ashani lets his Remora die. He also loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He taps Mana Confluence to help cast Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and Ashani fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. He cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Godless Shrine onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Esper Sentinel. Ashani passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also in Alex's upkeep, Ashani sacrifices Ranger Captain, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Alex draws and pays 2 life to cast Phyrexian Metamorph. It enters as a copy of the One Ring, and Alex gains protection from everything. Alex activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing a card. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Wandering Archaic. Peter takes it, and Alex ends his turn. During his upkeep, Peter loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts Jeweled Lotus, paying the Esper tax. He casts Flesh Writher. Peter ends his turn. 
During his upkeep, Ryan loses a life to the Wandering. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. He floats a mana, then sacrificing it, fetching up a Graft Digger's Cage onto the battlefield. He activates the One Ring, adding a counter, and drawing two cards. He casts Chrome Mox, paying for Esper. It enters, and Ryan imprints Anya's Ravager. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts a Goblin Matron. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. All through, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Rogue as it enters. Ashani passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Alex flashes in a Frilled Mystic. During his upkeep, Alex loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He loses a life to the One Ring, then activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing 2 cards. He draws and taps Waterlog Grove to help cast Dead Eye Navigator. It enters and Soul Bonds to Frilled Mystic. The table straps in, and Alex passes to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Ryan loses two life to the One Ring. He draws and activates the One Ring. He has a counter and draws three. He casts Hammer of Nizan. Esper triggers and Ashani draws. It enters and equips the Goblin Matron. Ryan plays a snow-covered mountain, sacrificing City of Traitors as it enters. He casts Conqueror's Flail. It enters, Hammer triggers, and Ryan equips Flail to Goblin Matron. Finished up, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Lotus Petal. He casts Portable Hole. It enters and exiles Kennen. Next, Ashani uses Cavern of Souls to cast an uncounterable Tibbet, Seller of Secrets. It enters and Ashani creates two treasures and three clues. Ashani ships the turn. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He also loses two life from the One Ring. Still in his upkeep, he activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing three. He draws and casts a Spring Leaf Drum. Esper triggers and Ashani draws. He taps Waterlog Grove to help recast his commander, Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. After some deliberation among the table, Kennen resolves. Next, Alex casts Spellskite. After some more deliberation, Spellskite resolves. He plays a Treasure Vault for turn, sacrificing City of Traitors as it enters. He casts a Simic Signet. Alex passes. At the end of Alex's turn, Peter hard casts Deadly Rollick, targeting Spellskite. Esper and Wandering Archaic trigger. Alex creates a copy, targeting Goblin Matron. Matron is exiled, then Ashani draws through Esper, then Spellskite is exiled. The turn moves to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Grey Merchant of Asphodel. It enters, each opponent loses 5, and Peter gains 15. He ends his turn. At the end of Peter's turn, Ryan casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Frilled Mystic, paying the Esper tax. Wandering Archaic triggers, Alex copies it, targeting Esper Sentinel, killing it. In response, Alex activates Deadeye's ability, flickering Frilled Mystic, countering Lightning Bolt. The turn moves to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses 3 life to the One Ring. He draws and activates the One Ring. He adds a counter and draws 4 cards. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Ryan creates 17 treasures. He activates Conqueror's Flail, targeting Dockside. In response, Ashani improvises Whir of Invention. Wandering Archaic triggers and Alex copies it. Then Alex fetches up an Arcane Signet onto the battlefield. Then Ashani fetches up an Imposter Mech onto the battlefield. And enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist. Dockside triggers and Ashani creates 33 treasures. With the equip still on the stack, Ashani casts Mystical Tutor. Archaic triggers and Ashani pays. Then Ashani fetches up a Silence onto the top of his library. He cracks a clue and draws a card. Then Ashani casts Silence. Archaic triggers and Ashani pays. With no answers, Silence resolves. With the equip still on the stack, Ashani casts Enlightened Tutor, paying for Archaic. He fetches up a Time Thief onto the top of his library. Then with nothing else, the equip resolves. Ryan equips Hammer of Nizan onto Dockside. Locked out of doing anything else, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Ashani channels Ottawara Soaring City, bouncing Wandering Archaic back to Alex's hand. Still in the end step, he cracks two clues and draws two cards. The turn moves to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Tundra. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Tivit. Ryan takes it, Tivit triggers, and Ashani creates two clues and three treasures. In his second main phase, Ashani casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Imposter Mech. Mech is bounced, Ashani sacks a land, copying the chain, targeting Deadeye Navigator. Deadeye is bounced, Alex sacks a land, copying the chain, targeting Dockside, so Ashani cannot copy it again. Dockside is bounced, Ryan sacks a land, copying the chain, targeting Tivit. Ward triggers, and Ryan pays three. Tivit is bounced, and Ashani stops the chain. Next, Ashani casts Imposter Mech. It enters as a copy of Kennen. He casts Transmute Artifact. He sacrifices Portable Hole, fetching up a Witchclaw Talisman onto the battlefield, paying the difference. He activates Witchclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Witchclaw to Peter. He casts Grand Abolisher. With no answers, Abolisher resolves. Ashani taps Mana Confluence to cast Time Thief. He recasts his commander, Tibbet. It enters, and Ashani creates two clues and three treasures. Ashani activates Time Thief, sacrificing his Mana Crypt and four treasures, getting an extra turn. Ashani presents a loop of taking extra turns, attacking with Tippet, creating artifacts, then sacking them to Time Thief to take another turn. He does this over and over, until the table is dead, and Ashani wins the game. Ryan won the Blackout Challenge and gets to start us off.
But Alana has a pregame action, putting gemstone caverns onto the battlefield, exiling an island. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a snow covered mountain. He casts a mana vault. He casts a metal worker. He passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Alana casts Pongify, targeting metal worker. Ryan declares his lifelong grudge against Alana as it resolves. Metal worker is destroyed, and Ryan creates a 3 3 ape. The turn moves to Alana. Alana draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum. She casts a Jewel Lotus. She cracks it to cast her commander, Thada Adele Acquisitor. She casts a Mox Amber. She passes. Peter draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. Peter ends his turn. John draws and plays the Plains. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Felidar Guardian. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Boromir, Warden of the Tower. John ships the turn. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He takes no actions and passes the turn. Alana draws and moves to combat. She attacks Peter with Thada. Peter takes it, Thada triggers, and Alana fetches up the One Ring from Peter's library into exile. In her second main phase, she plays an Ancient Tomb. She taps it to help cast the One Ring from exile. It enters, and Alana gains protection from everything. She activates the One Ring, adding a burden counter and drawing a card. Finished up, Alana passes the turn. Peter draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He passes. John draws and casts Sarah Ascendant. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Boromir. Peter takes it, and John ends his turn. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He takes no actions and passes the turn. During her upkeep, Alana loses a life to the One Ring. She draws and activates the One Ring. In response, Peter taps Tarnished Citadel to help flash in an Orcish Bowmasters. In response, Alana taps Ancient Doom and Cephalid Coliseum to help hard cast Force of Will. In response, Ryan casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Force of Will. Force is countered and Bowmasters resolves. Bowmasters enters, pings Thada, and Peter amasses Orcs 1. Then Alana adds a counter to the One Ring and draws 2. Bowmasters triggers twice, pings Thada twice, killing it, and Peter amasses 2. Alana plays a Mana Confluence and passes to Peter. Peter draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He passes. At the end of Peter's turn, John flashes in a Cathar Commando. John draws and moves to combat. He attacks Peter with Sarah Ascendant and Alana with Boromir. They both take it, and John gains 6 life. In his second main phase, John casts Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and John fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. John ships the turn to Ryan. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He draws, casts a Manifold Key, and ends his turn. During her upkeep, Alana loses 2 life to the One Ring. She draws and activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing 3 cards. Bowmasters triggers 3 times, and Peter targets Ranger Captain with all 3. In response, John sacrifices Ranger Captain, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Then the Bowmasters trigger Frizzles, and Alana plays an Island. She taps Ancient Tomb and Mana Confluence to help recast her commander, Thada Adele. Alana passes. At the end of Alana's turn, Peter cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Hollowed Fountain onto the battlefield tapped. Peter draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Eladomri's Call. Alana can interact, but cannot do so with Boromir on the battlefield. So the table agrees to band together. In response, John sacrifices Boromir, giving his creatures indestructible until the end of turn. The ring tempts him, and John makes Sarah Ascendant his ring bearer. Still in response, Alana casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card. Then Eladomri's call is countered and exiled. Next, Peter casts Talisman of Dominance and passes to John. John draws and casts Esper Sentinel. He moves to combat and attacks Alana with Cathar Commando and Peter with Sarah Ascendant. They both take it, and John gains 6 life. John passes. During his upkeep, Ryan activates Manifold Key, untapping his Mana Vault. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts Thran Dynamo. Esper triggers and John draws. Bowmasters triggers, kills Esper Sentinel, and Peter amasses one. Then Thran Dynamo resolves. Ryan casts Basalt Monolith and passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, John flashes in a Samwise the Stouthearted. In enters, John returns Esper Sentinel from his graveyard to his hand, and the ring tempts him. The turn moves to Alana. During her upkeep, Alana loses 3 life to the One Ring. She draws and plays an Island. She moves to combat and attacks Thada at Peter. Since Thada has Island Walk, Peter cannot block. Peter takes it, Thada triggers, and Alana fetches up a Wish Claw Talisman into exile. In her second main phase, Alana activates the One Ring. She adds a counter and draws 4 cards. Bowmaster triggers 4 times, targeting Samwise, Cathar Commando, and Thada Adele. Alana floats a blue with Mox Amber, then all creatures die. Then Peter amasses 4. Next, Alana taps Ancient Doom and Cephalid Coliseum to help cast a Hullbreaker Horror. She casts Mox Diamond. Hullbreaker Horror triggers, bouncing Bowmasters back to Peter's hand. Then Diamond resolves, and Alana discards Manama, School at Water's Edge. Alana casts Soul Ring. Horror triggers, targeting Mox Diamond. In response, John evokes a Solitude, exiling a white card. In response, Alana taps Mana Confluence to cast Chain of Vapor, targeting the Orc army. Hullbreaker Horror triggers, bouncing Solitude back to John's hand. With Chain still on the stack, John evokes Solitude again, exiling a white card. Solitude enters, exiling Hullbreaker Horror. Alana gains 7 life, and Solitude is sacrificed. Then Chain resolves, the Orc army is bounced, and Peter sacrifices a land, continuing the chain, targeting the One Ring. The One Ring bounces back to Peter's hand, and then Alana stops the chain. Then Hullbreaker Horror's trigger resolves, Alana bounces Mox Diamond back to her hand, then Soul Ring resolves. She casts an Arcane Signet. She casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Ottawara, Soaring City. She casts a Witchclaw Talisman from Exile. With nothing else, Alana ships the turn to Peter.
Peter draws and taps Mana Confluence to help cast the One Ring. It enters, and Peter gains protection from everything. He activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing a card. Peter ends his turn. John draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Sarah Ascendant. Ring Bearer triggers, and John draws and discards. Then Ryan takes it, and John gains 6 life. In his second main phase, John casts Rule of Law. John passes. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, Ryan casts Chaos Warp, targeting Rule of Law. It resolves, John shuffles it into his library, then reveals a planes, putting it onto the battlefield. Next, Ryan activates Manifold Key, untapping Mana Vault. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Ryan creates 9 treasures. He casts Goto, Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. Ryan activates Helm of the Host, equipping it to Goto. Ryan moves to combat, creating a copy of Goto Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Hammer of Nizan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers and equips to his original Goto. Ryan attacks John with his Goto copy. Goto triggers and untaps. John takes it, and in his second combat, Ryan creates another copy of Goto. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Conqueror's Flail onto the battlefield. It enters, Hammer triggers, and equips to the original Goto. Then Ryan attacks John again. Goto triggers and untaps again. Then John takes it, and in his next combat, Ryan creates another Goto. It enters, and Ryan fetches up an Argentum Armor onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers, and Ryan attaches it to his newly created copy of Goto. Ryan attacks John with Goto. Goto and Argentum Armor trigger, Ryan destroys Peter's Mana Confluence, then Goto untaps, and John takes the hit. Ryan moves to combat, creates another copy of Goto, and attacks John with both Gotos this time. Argentum Armor triggers again and destroys Peter's Tarnished Citadel. Ryan presents a loop of attacking John and Alana until they are dead. He continues the loop attacking Peter until he has about 100,000 untapped Gotos. Since Peter has protection from everything, he doesn't take any damage. Ryan passes the turn to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter loses a life to the One Ring. He draws and then goes into the tank, trying to decide what to do. He activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing two cards. He realizes that there is nothing he can do to stop the Onslaught, concedes, and Ryan wins the game. Ryan won the Savage Challenge and gets to start us off. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Bergy, God of Storytelling. He passes. Zack draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts Mystic Remora and passes the turn. Peter draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He ends his turn. Chris draws and plays a Shattered Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play Untapped, paying 3 life. He casts a Mana Crypt. Remora triggers and Zack draws. He casts a Mox Opal and Zack draws again. He casts his Commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn, and Zack draws. He activates Jessica's first ability, targeting Ryan's Bergy. The table prepares for war, and Chris gives the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Bergy. Zack takes 9 damage due to Jessica, and Ryan ships the turn. During his upkeep, Zack pays to keep his Remora. He draws, plays a Mana Confluence, and passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Peter taps his Mana Confluence to cast a Worldly Tutor. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Zack pays 2 life to cast Mental Misstep, countering the spell. Zack discards the Hand Size, and the turn moves to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter taps his Mana Confluence to cast Vampiric Tutor. Remora triggers, and Zack draws a card. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. He draws for turn and casts a Mana Crypt. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Peter casts a Lotus Petal, and Zack draws again. He cracks Petal to cast Rhystic Study, and Zack draws from Remora. In response, Zack casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, countering the spell. Unfortunately blown out, Peter passes. During his upkeep, Chris loses his Mana Crypt Flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays an Emergence Zone. He casts Jessica's Will, choosing both modes, targeting Zack. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Then Chris adds 10 red and exiles Pyroblast, Mountain, and an Ancient Tomb. He casts Pyroblast, targeting Mystic Remora. Remora triggers, and Chris pays. Remora is destroyed, and Chris follows up with a Strike at Rich, creating a treasure. He casts Relic of Legends. He casts his commander, Dargo the Shipwrecker. He activates Jessica's first ability, targeting Bergy. Chris ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt Flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts Brass Squire. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Bergy. Zack takes 9 through Jessica, and Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack casts Enlightened Tutor, fetching up an Underworld Breach onto the top of his library. Zack draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Vampiric Tutor. He casts an Underworld Breach. In response, Peter casts Mindbreak Trap. The table goes wild as Underworld Breach is exiled. Next, Zack taps his Mana Confluence to cast Wishclaw Talisman and then ships the turn to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and taps Mana Confluence to help cast Joranneth Magistrate. Peter passes to Chris. During his upkeep, Chris wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Mountain. He activates Jessica's first ability targeting Dargo. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Dargo. Unfortunately, Zack cannot block, takes 21 Commander damage, and Zack loses the game. Chris gives the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He holds open blockers and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Peter loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and passes the turn. 
During his upkeep, Chris wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a City of Traitors. He activates Jessica's first ability, targeting Dargo. He moves to combat, then attacks Ryan with Dargo. Ryan blocks with Bergy and takes 12 through Jessica. Chris passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Jessica with Brass Squire. Jessica dies, and Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Peter taps Mana Confluence to cast Tainted Pact. He exiles from the top of his library until he exiles an Underworld Breach, putting it into his hand. The turn moves to Peter. During his upkeep, Peter loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and taps Mana Confluence to cast an Underworld Breach. He escapes Lotus Petal from his graveyard. He cracks it to help cast a Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself. He mills 9 cards. He escapes Lotus Petal and cracks it for a blue. He escapes Lotus Petal again and cracks it for another blue. He escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself, milling 18. He escapes and cracks Lotus Petal 4 more times, adding 4 blue. He escapes Brain Freeze, milling the rest of his library. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and Peter wins the game. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts an Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. Zack passes. Peter draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts an Esper Sentinel and passes the turn. Chris draws and plays a Dwarven Ruins into play tap. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped as well. Ryan passes. Zack draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Rhystic Study. Esper triggers, and Peter draws. Zack ships the turn. During his upkeep, Peter casts Enlightened Tutor. Rhystic triggers, and Zack draws a card. Then Peter fetches up a Mystic Remora onto the top of his library. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Mystic Remora. Rhystic triggers, and Zack draws. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Esper. Zack takes it, and Peter passes. Chris draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He stares at three draw engines and ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Peter pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to cast a Mana Vault, paying for Rhystic. Peter passes to Chris. Chris draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Goblin as it enters. He casts a Professional Facebreaker. Rhystic triggers and Zack draws. Chris gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and casts Jessica's Will, targeting Zack. Remora, Esper, and Rhystic trigger. Peter draws two and Zack draws one. Jessica's Will resolves and Ryan adds nine red. He casts Grim Monolith. Mystic and Rhystic trigger and each player draws. He casts Manifold Key and both draw again. He casts Basalt Monolith and both draw again. He casts Wheel of Misfortune. Both players draw, then Wheel resolves. Each player secretly chooses a number, reveals them, then Ryan takes 5 damage, and Ryan discards his hand and draws 7. Next, Ryan plays a City of Traitors. He casts a Soul Ring. Rhystic and Remora trigger, Peter draws, and Ryan pays for Rhystic. He casts an Arcane Signet, and both players draw. With nothing else, Ryan passes. Zack draws and moves the combat. He attacks Ryan with Timna. Ryan takes it, and Zack gains 2. In his second main phase, Zack pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts Gamble. Remora and Esper trigger, and Peter draws 2. In response, Peter casts Pact of Negation. Rhystic triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts a Pact of Negation of his own, targeting Peter's Pact. Remora triggers, and Peter draws. Pact counters Pact, and Gamble resolves. Zack fetches up a card into his hand, and then randomly discards a Calling the Weak. He casts Silence. Remora triggers, and Peter draws. In response, Peter casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Silence. Rhystic triggers, and Zack draws a card. In response, Zack casts Force of Will, paying a life, and exiling a blue card. Remora triggers, and Peter draws a card. With no other actions, Force counters Force, and Silence resolves. Zack casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding 5 black. Remora triggers, and Peter draws. He casts an Ad Nauseam. He reveals a Windswept Teeth, Phantasmal Image, Chrome Mox, Snap, Mana Confluence, Intuition, Mental Misstep, Mystic Remora, Misty Rainforest, Demonic Consultation, Windfall, Chain of Vapor, Scalding Tarn, Lion's Eye Diamond, Grim Tutor, Gemstone Caverns, Wheel of Fortune, Felwar Stone, Exotic Orchard, Arcane Signet, Vampiric Tutor, Diabolic Intent, Talisman of Progress, Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, Ride of Flame, Verdant Catacombs, and a Dress Town, deciding to stop there. He casts Chrome Mox, Imprinting Fire Covenant. He casts Rite of Flame, adding 2 red. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Soul Ring. It bounces. Zack sacks a land to continue the chain, bouncing Chrome Mox. He sacks a land and bounces Arcane Signet to his hand. He sacks a land, bouncing Rhystic to his hand. He sacks his final land, bouncing Timna to his hand, and stops the chain. He casts Soul Ring. He casts Chrome Mox, Imprinting Dress Down. He casts Windfall. Each player discards their hand and draws 31 cards. He casts Mox Opal. He casts Lotus Petal. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Zack creates 9 treasures. He casts Stasa's Oracle. It enters, and in response, Zack has Tainted Pact, exiling his library. Oracle's trigger resolves, and Zack wins the game.